Hi, my name is Brittany J. Jones. In this video, we are gonna be talking all about cutting layouts. If you've ever opened up one of our sewing pattern instructions and saw the multiple layouts and got a little overwhelmed and confused on which one you should be cutting, how you should be cutting out your pattern pieces, in this video, we're gonna cover all of that. So let's go ahead and get started. For this demonstration, I'm gonna be using the sewing instructions that are inside of Simplicity S9753. When you get your pattern, you want to, of course, open it up and inside of it, you will have your tissue paper as well as your instructions here. When you open up your instructions, you will see your cutting layouts down here on the bottom. Like I mentioned before, you will see multiple cutting layouts. To locate the one that you need, you will need three things. You will need to know the pattern view that you are making. So this pattern has three different views, view A, B, and C. You will also need to know the width of the fabric that you have purchased for this pattern. So if you have purchased 45 width fabric, that's a detail that you need to know. Or if you've purchased 60 inch width fabric, that's a detail that you need to know. You also need to know your pattern size that you plan to make. So again, the three things that you need to know to help you locate which cutting guide is the one that you need to be cutting for your pattern. You need to know the cutting view that you intend to make, whether it's view A, B, or C. You need to know the width of the fabric that you have purchased, whether it's 45 inches wide or 60 inches wide. And you also need to know the size that you plan to cut. Those three details will help you locate which cutting guide you need to be following along with. Once you have located the cutting guide that you plan to follow, you can either grab a pencil, a pen, or a marker, and you can just simply highlight it or circle it, whichever works best. That way you can know exactly which one you're gonna be following along with, and you don't need to flip flop between your pages here. Down on your cutting layout, you will also notice a layout shading key. This is important to know because it tells you the wrong side of the fabric, right side of the fabric, the pattern pieces, if it has the pattern piece printed side up or if the printed side is facing down. So just taking a quick look at this pattern here, if it says the pattern piece is printed side up, then you would be able to see all of this very clearly. But if it says the pattern piece printed side is down, then you would just flip this so it's facing down onto the fabric. Now that we went through the three things that you need to know when you are selecting your cutting layout, and just to go over it one more time, for example, if I'm gonna be cutting out view B from this pattern here, and I wear a size 14, and I have purchased 45 inch width fabric, I'm gonna come over here to pants B, because that's a view that I want to make. I'm gonna look right here for my size, this size is for size four, six, eight, 10, and 12. So that's not for me. This size right here is for size 14, 16, and 18. So this is the correct size. And the fabric is also 45 inch width fabric. So this right here, I'm making pants B, but this is also the cutting layout under pants B that I need to follow. I don't need to follow this first one here because it's not for my size pants B, but this is the cutting layout here that I will need to follow. So there are a few details, again, just three main ones that you need to be on the lookout for. So just take your time and make sure that you are picking the right cutting layout for the view, the size, and the width of fabric that you have. Once you have decided on the cutting layout that you'll be using, it's important to note and take a look at how the fabric is folded on the layout. The most common way that you will see it on your cutting layout is with the fabric folded lengthwise. So you can see here that the fabric is long and it has one fold going down the length of it. That's the most common way to be efficient with your fabric, but it's not the only way to cut out your fabric. And we'll cover more of that in just a moment. One of the questions that we do get asked a lot about is whether you should be folding your fabric with right size facing or can you fold it with the wrong size facing? Does it really matter? Is it gonna make a difference? And it really does come down to personal preference. Most sewers and sewists and seamstresses do prefer to have their fabric facing right sides together. That way they can easily transfer all of their markings, circles, squares, triangles, transfer everything right to the wrong side of the fabric. And once you move your tissue paper, you can begin sewing right away. If you are new to sewing, we definitely recommend that you start reading your instructions from the upper left hand on the guide sheet and go through all the information. You'll be surprised how many of us open up our guide sheet and just kind of skim without actually reading and understanding 
what the information is saying. So again, if you're just now starting out, you're new to sewing, we definitely recommend that you start at the upper left-hand corner up there where you see the brand title and name in bold and you see, the, you see the line drawings for the garments. Start there and work your way over. You'll also come to a section on your pattern where it has all the pattern pieces listed out for you. It tells you exactly what the numbers are. So for number one, that's the front. Number two, that's the right fly facing. All this information is important. You want to make sure that you're reading everything so you know what pieces you have and also what pieces you need to be cutting out. The pattern numbers that you need for the view that you're making is also listed on the specific cutting guide. So for pants B, you would need pattern piece number 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So again, take your time, read over all the information so you make sure you're not missing anything important. Another thing that we also recommend is that you go over your pattern pieces with a warm, dry iron. So your pattern pieces are here. They are folded very neatly inside the envelope. You can imagine once you unfold them and cut them out, they're gonna have lots of wrinkles. So it's always best to go ahead and just go over them to get all the wrinkles out. So when you lay them on your fabric, you know that everything is gonna be cut nice and smooth. So just take a moment. I know that I get impatient and I get really excited. <laughs> And sometimes I just lay it down and I start cutting, but I do want to encourage you to just take a moment and go over your patterns, uh, tissues with a warm, dry iron, just to make sure everything is nice and smooth before you lay it onto your fabric and start cutting it out. So like I mentioned previously, one of the most common ways for cutting fabric is with it folded in half lengthwise. So this is a little example here that I have cut out and I am going to fold it here. So this would be the lengthwise of my fabric right here. So going all the way down would be the lengthwise of the fabric. And I have my salvage edges here. So these here are the raw edges of the fabric. You can see the salvage edges. This is also a salvage edge here. So you have your salvage edges together. You have your cut ends here and you have your fold here. This is the fold of my fabric. And most times it will be facing you when you were cutting out your fabric. So this is a common way that you will see fabric. And if you go into the stores and if you get it off of a bolt, a little bolt of fabric that they come wrapped on, most of the times when they are unrolling them, they're already on the lengthwise because there's so much yardage that they're unrolling. That is the length of the fabric. So again, this is the common way that you will have your fabric laying when you are cutting it out. Now let's take a look at a crosswise fold. This is used only for fabrics that do not have a nap or one way design. So for a crosswise fold, you want to open your fabric out like so, and you're gonna fold it crosswise. And so here's the difference at what we're seeing. Now we have our salvage edges together down here on one end. We have our cut edges together here and we have the salvage edges together here. So for me, it's easier when I think about the lengthwise fold as a hot dog because it's just the length of your fabric. So if you have three or four yards cut, it's just a really long piece of fabric and it's folded in half and it's just however many yards that you've purchased. For the crosswise fold, we are opening out that big amount of yardage and we're essentially folding that in half. So I think of that as more as a hamburger. But again, you have your salvage edges down here and you also have the salvage edges up here. So that's the difference between a lengthwise fold and a crosswise fold. You will see a crosswise fold option in some patterns, but you will definitely see them if you are working with a design that has a border print option. That is the perfect time to use a crosswise fold because you can then lay your pieces along the border which the border would typically be here along the salvage edges. And then you could just lay your pattern pieces along the border print according to your cutting layout. So that is one of the many times where you will see the option for a crosswise fold. And that is if you are using a border print, you wanna make sure that you're getting that print cut nicely onto your fabric and the crosswise fold will allow that. Now that we have went over the lengthwise fold and the crosswise fold, now let's talk about double thickness. Double thickness is a type of fold that is used for fabrics that have a nap, such as velvets or corduroys of fabric with one-way designs. So think about one-way designs as birds, 
when you think about birds and they're all going in the same direction, that is a one-way design. So I have my fabric here and I have it folded along the crosswise grain. I'm actually gonna go ahead and cut this in half, that way I can use the rest for other examples in this video. So I've just cut this just for the video and demo purposes, okay? This should be your original salvage edge on your fabric, but I just want to cut it so I can show you on a much smaller piece of fabric. Now that we have it folded in half along the crosswise grain, then you want to cut along the fold. Before I cut it along the fold though, here's a tip. You want to put small arrows along both the salvage edges, indicating the direction of the nap or the design. So let's say for example that we are cutting birds and you see all of the birds going in this direction. You just want to make some arrows going in the direction that you see the birds and I'm gonna put it down here as well. And I'm gonna flip it over. I still see the birds going this way. The birds are still going this way. Now we can cut along the fold. So now that we have cut along the fold, I'm gonna take the top layer only and you want to turn this so that your nap or your one-way design is going in the same direction on both layers. So we can just take a look at this and you can see that these arrows down here that we placed are going this way and this arrow is going this way. That means that your nap on your velvet or corduroy, the nap is going this way and it's going that way. Or your birds are going this way and that way. You want to make sure that you turn that top layer so that now you have your markings and your nap and your one-way design all going in the same direction. You can lay that back on top and then you can start cutting out your pattern pieces. You have just done double thickness when you have a nap or one-way design. Now let's take a look at single thickness. On your cutting layout, if you see a pattern that is cut on single thickness, that means that the fabric is placed right side up. So you wanna make sure that your fabric isn't facing down. Make sure that you have your fabric facing up if you need to cut out a pattern piece on single thickness. All right, we have covered lengthwise fold, crosswise fold, double thickness, single thickness. Now let's look at a combination of a lengthwise fold and single thickness. We have our folded edge of the fabric here facing us. We have our two cut edges here along the side and we have the salvage edges parallel, but they are not touching each other. So this is our lengthwise fold here and this may be two, three, four, five yards, however much you've purchased, but you have your lengthwise fold and over here you have your single thickness. So again, if you have a pattern piece that just needs to be cut out on single thickness, not on the lengthwise fold and you can just cut that out over here and you can cut out the remaining of your pieces that needs to be cut out along the lengthwise fold here. If your cutting layout has two lengthwise folds, then you would fold one coming to the center like so, and then you would take the other and fold that to the center like so. Just gonna move this over. So we have fold, fold, cut edges here, and our salvage edges are here. This is two lengthwise fold. The fabric is folded so that the salvage edges meet in the center. I have used this method a couple times, especially if I am making like a tank top, I could put my front over here and I could put my back over here. Or if I'm making just a simple body con dress, the same thing. I could open out my fabric, fold it so that salvage edges meet in the center. I have two lengthwise folds going down the length of my fabric and I can just lay one of my pattern pieces here that need to be cut on the fold and I can lay the other one here that needs to be cut on the fold. This is an excellent way to maximize the yardage on your fabric instead of just having it folded lengthwise once and cutting out your front and your back. You're able to take advantage of your yardage and you're able to cut your front and your back. When you begin to place your pattern pieces onto your fabric, you want to position the larger pieces first, beginning with those that should be placed on the fabric fold. So here is my fold here, 
and I'm just using this pattern piece here. This is from McCall's 8282. You will want to start here with your larger pieces, placing these along the fold. This right here is my center front on fold line. So I have that lined up with the fold of my fabric. Once you have all those pieces on the fold, then you can position all other pattern pieces so that the grain line arrow is parallel to the salvage edges or to the lengthwise fold. So I'm gonna grab this pattern piece here. This one here does not have a fold. This has a grain line and I wanna make sure that it is parallel to the salvage edge. To make sure that you have your grain line parallel to the selvage edge, you want to measure from each tip of the grain line marking to the selvage edge or to the fold of the fabric. So what I'm going to do is grab some pins and I'm just going to pin this in place over here. I'm going to grab my ruler. And again, from each end of the grain line, so here's one end here, I'm just gonna place my ruler there and I'm gonna measure over to the end. And that's about 13 and 3 fourths. So I'm gonna put a pin here, 13 and 3 fourths. Then I'm gonna come down to the other side and make sure that it's also measuring 13 and 3 fourths. And if it is, then I can go ahead and place a pin there that makes sure that I am on the grain line. If it's not even, then you can move it over if you need to, to make sure that it is matching up to this end of your grain line as well. And then you place a pin there. The more you start sewing, the more tools that you will start to accumulate. Now, this is not necessary when you start out sewing, but again, as your skills improve, you may want to invest in a cutting mat. Now you could get a cutting mat like this. This is actually a self healing mat and you would use this in addition to using a rotary cutter. Again, this is not something that's necessary to begin sewing with, or you could get just a heavy duty cardboard surface and that opens up to 36 by 69 of a surface of heavy duty cardboard that you can use to cut onto. And it is marked with special lines like this one is here for cutting out bias tape when you want that 45 degree angle. It also helps with cutting out circles. So again, you have some different options for boards if you want to protect your surface while you are sewing and cutting. Okay, going back to cutting, once we have pinned down our grain line, now we can go ahead and pin diagonally at our corners. So we can pin here. You never want to have your pins going past your cutting lines. You don't wanna accidentally cut over one with your shears. As you are pinning, make sure that you continue to smooth out your fabric to make sure everything lays nice and flat. And again, just continue to pin. Another option if you don't prefer using pins is you can always use pattern weights to hold down your pattern pieces and just cut around that again instead of using pins, but that's totally optional. Once you have your pattern piece pinned down, then you can go ahead and cut around your pattern. If you have multiple pattern pieces down on your fabric, you always want to make sure that you don't have any pieces overlapping. Make sure that everything has enough room between them so that you are cutting each of your pattern pieces out completely. There will come a time where you may need to use a special layout. For the most part, majority of fabrics can be laid out according to the cutting layouts that's in the pattern. But there are times when you may be using a specific fabric that has a beautiful design on it, and you may not want to use the cutting layout because number one, it could disrupt the print too much, or it could have a detail of the fabric and an unflattering placement on the body. So when it comes to that, you do wanna take special care with your fabric to make sure that any designs are in placements that are flattering and not in a placement that's not as flattering on the body. So just keep that in mind. You may have to deviate from the cutting layout so that the fabric can shine and be really beautiful in the garment that you're making. If the fabric you are using does require like a special layout, like I said, your print could have like very big flowers on it and you don't wanna disrupt them too much, we do recommend that you look for a pattern that has simpler lines and not so many seam lines. So you don't want anything being cut up so much. Let's just say you do have a giant flower 
you don't want to cut that up so much. You want to pick a, a pattern that has some simple lines, maybe just some side seams and a shoulder or something that really flatters the design of the fabric. Let's talk about fabrics with nap. Those fabrics are typically your velvets or your corduroy fabrics. When you hold them up, they can look different depending on the direction that you hold them. When you have the nap running down, the fabric is smoother and the color is lighter. But when you have the nap running up, the color is darker and it's not as smooth as it is when it's going down. For these fabrics, it is best to cut them so that the nap is running down. When you are working with fuzzy surface fabrics like your brushed flannel or your faux fur, it is best to cut these fabrics with the nap running down as well. When it comes to some knits and shiny fabrics like your satin, light reflects differently on them depending on the way you hold them up. So with these fabrics, it doesn't matter if you cut them in any sort of direction, you just wanna make sure that all of the pattern pieces are going in the same direction. When it comes to plaids and stripes, some of them do have uneven repeats. For these, you wanna make sure that you take your time when you're cutting out your pattern pieces and line those up so that the color bars, they match up evenly once you sew them together. So they do take a little bit more time, but there's definitely worth it in the end, especially if they have the uneven repeats. Garments that are made from plaids and bow stripes or medium checks, border prints, for example, you want to have those match up at the seams. Whenever you are planning to match up specific lines and designs at the seams, take into account that you may need to purchase a little bit of extra yardage. How much extra yardage depends on the frequency of the repeat. So for small, even plaids and stripes, they may require up to a quarter or half a yard more of extra fabric. If you have something large, that may require up to a half a yard to a full extra yard of fabric so that you're able to match up your designs and your lines and stripes at your seam lines. I hope this video has been helpful to further understand cutting layouts.